You're listening to the Minutes on Growth podcast, the show that brings you mindfully curated insights into relationships, spirituality, personal development, and everything in between with your host, Tanaz the same for. Hi, everyone. It's Tanaz the same for, and welcome to another episode of Minutes on Growth. Today, I have the beautiful Kelly Lynn Adams with us, transformational and embodiment coach, podcast host, and speaker. Welcome. Tanaz, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I am so excited to have you on. I've been following you for couple of years now and I just love your energy I love the way you present your message and you share that so tell us a little bit about yourself how did you end up becoming a transformational embodiment coach what does that mean and who do you serve yes thank you so much and I'm loving your journey Um, you're doing powerful work in the world so thank you so much yeah so my journey has been a very interesting one You know, I help high performers, you know, get to that next level of success without the burnout and the stress, because that was my story. So I, you know, went to college, went to school, worked in New York City, right on Wall Street. And then, then I got into the fashion industry and retail industry. And it was great. I learned so much. And I also knew I wanted to do something else like of my own. I always knew I wanted to start my own business. So I had, I was in the fashion industry, very high pressure, you know, a lot of demands. And then I had my business on the side, which was at first, you know, selling skincare. And then I found the coaching and speaking and and this, this world. So what had happened was I was literally having a corporate job. I was working, you know, 730 in the morning, all the way up sometimes to like midnight. And I was climbing this corporate ladder. At the same time, I was building my business on the side and Literally, I remember one point of my life, all I was doing was eating, (laughs) sleeping, and working. Uh, I had really no time for fun, no time for pleasure or play, no time for sexy time, I like to say. And what had happened is I landed in the hospital from burnout. I had adrenal fatigue. Uh, I remember one day specifically, I was in a meeting at my corporate job, and I looked up at the clock, and it was four o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, wow, I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drank any water and I haven't gone to the bathroom. So those were three things. I was like, Kelly, that's very interesting. Like I was such in a do, do, do state of mind that I like completely lost myself and lost myself in the, in the whole process. And at the time in my side business, I was coaching women how to love themselves. And then I landed in the hospital for not taking care of myself or loving myself. And so that really, that equated to my, I was finding love, validation, and acceptance in the work because I was getting recognized for how hard I was working and how I was like accomplishing all this, all these things. I mean, I'm type A overachiever and that's why I help women do the same thing because there's so many successful women that we've come so far, right? And we've come so far from our moms and grandmoms and past generations that We feel like we need to do it and have to do it all. And we can, we can, as women, we can multitask and we can do it all. And we don't need to lose ourselves, right? Or our identity or really our health while we're doing that. So, you know, it has been a process for me. And that's why I work with the people I do and the individuals, the very high performing individuals is because there's that happy and I'm grateful for what I have, yet there's this never satisfied and this dissatisfaction. Like I always want to be better. doesn't matter how many goals I've achieved. You're always going to want to do more, right? That's human nature. It's growth. So I really love teaching and helping and just coaching these individuals because I get it. You know, I've been there and it also too, a lot of the times we do block our blessings, right? When we're so focused and we're so like, because when we want something really, really, really bad, there's a slight like resistance to that, right? There's not like that allowing, the giving the space. And and sometimes that blocks, you know, sometimes that blocks the money, sexiness time, the magnetism, all of that. So it's a fine line. So I know that's a long ended answer to your question, but that's my journey. (laughs) I, I love it. As you were saying that, 
I thought of, you know, the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine. When we're in the masculine, we're always controlling and we feel the need to control and to be in charge of the narrative and to overperform and to overplan. And I think sometimes we forget to, you know, lean into the feminine of the traits of trust and surrender and faith and play. And I get it. I think because we've been sidelined for so long and now that we have like a seat at the table, we kind of feel like we need to prove ourselves and we don't know how to do both. And I loved what you said. You said you can have it all. And, you know, this is the opposite of the narrative that has been around for so long that you kind of have to choose either like a perfect career or the perfect family. You can't kind of have both. So how can we have it all? Like, what would you say would be the, like the one thing that creates that shift, like the mindset shift? It's a great question. So we can, and we need both the masculine and the feminine, right? There's, we can't just be all masculine and we can't just be all feminine. It's the yin and the yang. So what I like to invite people to do is there are seasons in our life, right? There's seasons when we're going to be more masculine There's other seasons where we're going to be more feminine. And so when I ask people this question, it's a loaded question. And a lot of people can't answer it. They're like, "Mm." Like, it's like, what do you really want? Question mark. And it's like, what do you really want in this next season? So a lot of people have a hard time like answering that question because it's like, I know what I want, but like, what do I really want? Like, do we actually give ourselves space to really think like, what do we want? Or are we just so busy, right? With our daily responsibilities, we just don't think it. And we're, we're living at really like the effect of our lives rather than the cause. So I think it's really knowing like what is next for you because your definition of success or, or your picture of success two years ago is not the same picture as it is today. So it's like, since we're constantly evolving and growing, it's like, and it's also like, who do you want to be, right? It's that, it's that whole visionary exercise of like, okay, imagine your ideal self, like who does he or she want to be? And it's stepping into that. Like if, if I were to say to you, okay, a camera crew or someone's going to be following you throughout your days, what would that video look like? Or what would that movie look like? And people were like, oh my gosh, I don't, right? So it's like, how are you acting in every moment of every day? And we don't want to get overwhelmed with like thinking about, are you really stepping into that full version of yourself after, right? You have defined like what is next for you or what does success look like for you in this, this season, right? And the season could be in 90 day chunks, right? Or it could be a year. So yeah, that's, that's what I like to tell people because they don't give themselves time and space to actually think. And then it's like, it's the thinking and it's the feminine. It's, and then it's the actual doing where if someone followed you on a daily basis, like how would, what would that movie look like? I know some days I'm like, oh my gosh, if someone followed me today, that this would not be, it might, it might be a reality TV show, but it's definitely not like that next version of myself that I have been embodying. And we get to change that, right? So, and again, it's, it's also not being perfect in, in every moment, but also being aware, you know, of who we're being in each moment. That's so powerful. Of like, imagine someone was following you around with a camera. I love that. I'm going to, I'm actually going to start doing that because you're absolutely right. Some days I'm like, this is definitely not in alignment with my higher self, the person that, you know, I kind of want to activate. And I always say the higher self is already within you. You just kind of have to activate it. It's like, it's like a dormant energy that we want to bring to life. How can we prevent resistance that will come up when we want to step into that embodiment because let's say we know what our future self looks like let's say we know what the higher self looks like the the vision it's clear but as we want to step into it I'm sure resistance will come up with like is this even meant for me is this even right for me like should I even be doing this who do you think you are to be doing this like so much of our beliefs will come up how can we tackle that resistance great question it's always going to come up resistant. It's, it's also fear, right? It's fear that comes up and what it is, is like just doing it, like get uncomfortable and just do it. It's, it's kind of like the Nike slogan, 
because if we sit and we wait and we listen to the voices in our head, which by the way, are not ours, right? They're past programming, their social conditioning, all of that. We then second guess and we just get caught up. And so a lot of people don't step in or lean into the uncomfortable because as human beings, we want to be comfortable. Think about the foods we eat, like comfort food, like, oh, like what's your favorite food that makes you feel so good, right? Like we are conditioned to want to feel comfortable. And yes, that is all all available to us. And when we have this resistance, it's like lean into it. Like, it's like, just lean further into the resistance of when we're having these thoughts in our head, it's like, where can you pattern interrupt and just like, just do something like totally outside the box. So, because when we have resistance, it's, it's also like the second guess guessing it's the imposter syndrome. It's all of that. And what I know to be true for myself is that whenever I take action, action, then like the more actions I take, it can be small actions every day, right? The more actions I take, the more momentum I gain, right? And then the more momentum I gain, the more confidence I create. So it's, it's a ripple effect of taking small daily actions. And it's like that 1% rule that you hear like, oh, just get 1% better every day. And it's true because it also comes to like the self, like self-trust is also in there too, because say that you promise yourself, I'm going to work out today, like mentally, I'm, or maybe you wrote it down in your calendar. I'm going to work out today. And then you don't get to working out. Well, no one knows that you promised yourself that you were going to work out except yourself. So when we don't honor what we say we're going to do to ourselves, that also brings in that, that chip of way of the self-confidence, right? So that is then also causes resistance because if you don't work out that day that you promised yourself, you're more resistant to then the second day being like, ugh, I missed yesterday. Like, do I even, am I going to work out? Right? You have that, like that split second. So that also causes resistance. So the way you want to, you know, really battle resistance is like lean into it and then take the small like action steps because over time, and this is why I also like to tell people as high performers, we, we don't do this or I don't do this is we want to set, we want to have like these, this, these tasks lists and we want to like set all these like incredible goals. And that's amazing. And yes, set them all. And it's like set the non-negotiables for the day. Usually it's like three to five that you're like, okay, before my head hits that pillow tonight, these are the three or five things I get to do. And if I don't do them, and I always tie it to a consequence, it's like, if I don't do them, then what am I going to do that I really hate? (laughs) You know? So it's like, you can play a game with yourself in that way. It's like, oh, I would have to run a mile. I don't like running. Like I get to do those three to five things. So there's so many techniques. And I think the overall message is like, just lean in and it's like under promise yourself and then over deliver. So you're not putting so much pressure on yourself. I love that. I love leaning in and facing our fears. I think society has kind of, I'm all for manifestation. I love the manifestation world and um, you know, there's so many powerful books out there and I think manifestation is less of a task and more of a feeling. It's more of an embodiment, but there is always this concept of the path of least resistance. And they say, if something is meant for you, you're not going to feel resistance. And online, I read something and it just stuck with me. And it said, the path of least resistance comes after the path of most resistance. And that has stuck with me because like, if we take that analogy and we're like, okay, if this meant for me, I'm not meant to feel resistance. So I'm not going to do what's difficult. I feel like that is how our inner critic keeps us from playing big, it kind of keeps us playing small, like stay in your comfort zone. What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on, you know, the balance of flowing, what flows for us and the balance of doing uncomfortable things? Yeah, hundred percent. So I love this because when you were talking, what an image that came into my mind was when you are maybe not feeling a certain way, right? Maybe you're 
depressed or anxious, or maybe you're going through a breakup or something that really affects you that the feelings are sadness or like uncomfortable or unsureness. And so we want to feel those emotions and we want to cry. Like the, the, the moment that you're like about to cry or you're depressed, like some of us, we can either choose to cry or we can choose not to feel it. And so when we choose to cry, that like there's resistance in that choice. Do we let it all out and cry and feel our feelings? Or do we go uh, order food over it or distract ourselves from it or not think about it, push it away, right? So do we sit in our cell? So that's, that's in a case of resistance, right? So do we feel our end? So think about when you have a good cry. So say you made a choice to, to cry and, and feel in your feelings. Right after that cry or a couple hours after that, don't you feel like, <sighs> right? And then that's the flow state. So it's like, you're going to feel the resistance. And when we lean in and allow ourselves to get emotional, to feel that like, and this is one example, when we allow ourselves to be uncomfortable and to sob and, and be a hot mess, then at the other side of it, because it doesn't last forever, right? The resistance, unless you choose, right? If you're not facing something, there's a lot of like, people that have trauma. We can, we can talk about all of the things. And when we lean into the work, right, there's more of an opening as well. So, I mean, in my case, you know, for years I was doing, I was working over a lot of my emotions. You know, I put dating on hold. I put having a family on hold. I put right to feel those, all those emotions. Cause I was like, Oh, like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that aside. I'm not going to feel it. And then when the emotions would come up, I would eat over it. I would drink over it. I would have sex over it, right? So, and I wasn't allowing myself to feel. But when I allowed myself to feel and go, th go there, it's like, oh, that's when the healing happens. That's when there was more space for things to flow into my life. That's when miracles occurred when I was working over to my right side, but the miracle appeared on the left side, right? So it's, it's when we lean in, I think there's definitely miracles too feeling uncomfortable, too leaning in. And a lot of people don't like that because again, again, with the comfort, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to, to face resistance. Think about also working out. Like when you're trying to lose weight or you know, lift, lift um, and build muscle, well, when you're lifting, you're actually like tearing your muscle, right? But it's like, however, at the end, like over time, it's like, oh, it's slimming you down. It's building muscle. Like, there's that effect. So there's always going to be some kind of resistance or uncomfortableness when we get to do things that we want, because it's, it's that yin and yang again, that approach. So yeah, that's the example that came to mind when you were talking. <laughs> I love the example. I think it like beautifully put it into perspective. And I love that you said miracles occur, like when you're looking at left and then it's on the right. And I thought of the course in miracles and their definition of miracles, which is just a change in perspective. And when we can shift the way we kind of look at things and that's when we allow for different, different things to enter, things that are beyond our body's eyes, the, that are that is bigger and higher for us. I love that. Thank you so, so much for that. I know that you're professional at dealing with burnout. So can you tell us what is burnout and how can we, how can we deal with it? And how can we prevent it, actually? Let's, let's talk about prevention first. Yeah, because burnout can come in all different ways for different people. I think it's a personal experience. So how you can prevent it? So the things that I wasn't doing, right? And, and there's different techniques. There's so many. And again, I think it's personal. I'll, I'll just give you some kind of things that I actually just wrote about um, last week. It's giving also your, yourself space, right? And, and allowing yourself to not get to that breaking point. So how do we do this? Different ways. Like one is, I see this a lot in women, especially. I think it's prevalent in men too, but we don't celebrate our wins and, or we celebrate the wins that we think are big, right? A win today that everyone has is that you woke up this morning, right? Higher power, God, whatever you believe in, made you, yeah, woke you up. So that means your work's not done, right? So like, that's a win, right? And people are like, I'm not, like, what am I celebrating? Like, 
no, that's like actually a celebration because people actually didn't wake up today. So we don't celebrate whether you identify it small, medium, large wins, right? A win could be, I got out of bed, right? I have my, my legs. So celebration, and especially for women and high performers, they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I had a client that like doubled her income in a month. And she's like, oh yeah. I'm like, hello, like, hello, are we celebrating? Are we so, do you see what I see? Because I just saw you double your income in a month. So that, that's the type of, of celebration, you know? So where are we not celebrating? I wasn't celebrating. I was just getting through the debt, you know, when I was in my, my burnout stage. Number two is, this is more of like a well-being. Like, are you getting outside? Are you taking three deep breaths? Like, these are just small things. I know a lot of entrepreneurs, like today I'm back to back, right? I told you I'm back to back with meetings. However, I have space like 10 minutes here, you know, 15 minutes here to like eat, to go to the bathroom. I know people that are just back to back that don't create that space. So it's like, where are you not creating the space? Are you taking deep breaths throughout the day, right? That could be, that could literally just be like closing your eyes, taking three deep breaths, like being aware in your body. Are you drinking the water, right? I, like these are so simple. And yet, where are you not doing any of these? Another technique that, you know, helped me during this time of like the recovery is, I don't know if you're sure of EFT tapping or emotional freedom technique. So it's really just tapping on meridian points on your face, like your the top portion of your body, and you can YouTube it. And there's great like guided EFT tapping. And what that does, it's actually like reprogramming your nervous system, your subconscious, because all of what leads to burnout, honestly, if we want to talk about like childhood trauma and all, it's all of our past programming, that's not ours. Like we are conditioned. We picked it up from zero to seven, you know, and beyond. And we're just conditioned in the society. So Part of our job is to unlearn that conditioning and like reparent ourselves in a way. So the EFT tapping is really powerful. And it's also just like, just on a day-to-day basis, like checking in with yourself. Like there's so many tools I can I pull out. And it's, it's also very personal to people. You know, like you know, and everyone listening and watching, like, you know, when you have gone past your point and some people just keep going, like, you know, when you're tired, you know, when you're pushing yourself, you know, when you haven't taken vacation or a break. And it's like, in those moments, what do you do? Right. And we don't want to get to those moments until we, so that's why it's, it's more of kind of like preventative care, right? Why do we brush our teeth every day? Why do we take a shower every day? Right. So it's, it's, how can that, how can it just become a daily routine? And I'm not saying like, you know, listen, I was in corporate America and I would always say like, listen to the, all these podcasts and these interviews. And like some of these individuals would have these like two hour morning routines. And I'm like, okay, that's not going to work for my schedule because I don't have to. And, and not that I can't create two hours, but it just wasn't feasible in that season of my life. So if you don't have two hours to do your whole morning routine or a night routine, what do you have? right? Make it work for you. So like, and I, I know some of the busiest times, all I could do was maybe meditate, you know, for 10 minutes and then take three deep breaths in the middle of the day or set my phone, right? For alarms to remind myself. So it's just getting to that point where what's, what's going to work for you and not waiting till that breaking point. And it's easier said than done because we're just like, oh yeah, we'll put it off. We have, you know, everything else is more important until we are important, right? So I think that's the being the the proactive instead of the reactive, the whole state of mind is just so, so important. Thank you for saying that because when you said it should be personal, because you're absolutely right. There's so much content online and I love it. I mean, I'm so grateful for technology for providing a platform for professionals to share what works for them, but it's it's precisely that. It's what works for them. I had a client and she was like, you know what? Everyone says that to read when you wake up in the morning, but she hated reading and it was so difficult for her. And like, it really ruined her day. And I said, well, why are you doing it? And she's like, well, that's what they say. I'm like, well, what would be an alternative? Maybe listening to an audible would be better for you, or maybe a podcast or 
whatever it could be, but do something that actually brings joy into your life. The whole point of a morning routine is to start your day with joy, not start your day with like agony and pain and like struggle and be like, I hate this. That doesn't work. So I'm so, so, so happy that you mentioned that and like personalizing what works for you. Of course, we're not saying wake up and have a donut, like a chocolate donut. It's like, you know, <laughs> we know what is healthy and what isn't, but pick and choose your own list from the healthy list, if that makes sense. <laughs> I love that. And I will say this, listen, when you're celebrating and you feel like a donut, like go eat the donut, right? Like that's also too like living. Cause like, I know for me, like there was a point where I'm like, oh, I can't eat this. And, the, and yes, like, you know, I have like a gluten intolerant, like I get it. And it's like, again, we don't allow ourselves pleasure and play. Mm-hmm. And that whole like, you know, sexiness time and mag- magnetization and all of that, like, that is what it is like that, like the the fun. And and I always say like, the more I play, the more I prosper because we also don't allow ourselves because we're just like, Oh, who am I to celebrate? Who might have fun? Who might eat to eat the donut when I want, when I want it. Right. But yeah, I mean, donut in the first (laughs) person is not good. (laughs) I definitely, definitely, definitely agree with you. I think we don't have enough I think fun and play has been like so looked down upon that everyone is like scared. They're like, you know, if I have fun, other people are working, I'm going to fall behind. And, and it's quite the opposite. Like exactly as you said, the more fun you have, and of course take inspired action along your fun, the more you prosper. That is, that is a beautiful affirmation. Thank you for sharing that. If you could go back, it's my last question. If you could go back 10 years, What would be one piece of advice you'd give yourself that you feel is what you needed to hear back then that you didn't hear? I'm going to get emotional (laughs) because I know people are struggling with this. And it was like, I was such at a low point um, that my life, they're like, everything is going to be okay. Like 10 years ago, I was so... And I have such compassion and I'm crying out of like joy because it's like, I've come so far and I want people to know, like, I, cause I have a client, you know, like working on the same thing of like, she's not married at a certain age. You know, she's freaking out. She doesn't have kids. Her career is not where she wanted to be. And it's like, it's going to be okay. Like I can, t- I can totally, like when you say 10 years ago, I was like, oh my gosh, I was such in a different place. So if like anyone is like struggling or feeling that way, like everything's going to work out. I promise you. And it's so beautiful to witness because you don't think that anything's going to work out because you're struggling, you know? And like, even at the point of burnout or like judging yourself by society. And my coach would always say to me, you know, like 10 years ago, because yes, I had a coach 10 years ago. It's like, what if it never happens? And what if it does, you know, like, can you be happy in this moment? You know, you don't, you don't need anything. Cause this is the thing we want. We want whatever we want because we think it's going to make us feel a certain way. So you, thank you so much for asking that question. Cause I just went 10, 10 years back and I'm like, Whoa, like I really felt that. And like to those people, right. That are, that are just struggling and that, maybe you don't think things are working out like it, it will, you know? And it's so like, and I would always be tell my coach, I'm like, you don't understand. You don't understand. And I would be like, you really don't. <laughs> Cause I'm like, you have it all. And I think when we hear that, it's like, I don't relate because you know, you're not in my struggle and that's what I want people to, to take away. And I think that's why I got so emotional. Cause I'm like, Whoa, I really went there like 10 years ago be like, that's the place I was in. And honestly, it just took like, it just took one foot in front of the other. And like, yes, you're going to cry. You're going to be mad. You're going to do all of that. And like higher power, God, universe, whoever you believe in. And I call it the inner GPS. Even if you make a left turn and you don't think you're moving in the right direction, you're always going to be rerouted. Like you're all, it's a constant, like, you know, if you're going left or you should be going right, like you're always going to be guided. So I obviously got emotional for someone to hear that and experience that because it was so true for me 10 years ago where I was like, nothing is working out. And by all societies, you know, standards and all of that. 
so yeah, I would just say that everything's going to work out and like, just trust the process. And I know that's so cliche, but just know, like you are always being guided. Oh my God. Goosebumps. I got goosebumps by, by everything that you shared. And thank you so much for being so vulnerable and, and, and showing that side. And it's really difficult sometimes to share our struggles but you're absolutely right. Someone that someone outside needs to hear this and be like, it's okay. Like what I'm feeling, it's okay. And it will get better. And there is light at the end of the tunnel and exactly just one foot in front of the other. And I, I always say, you know, you take the step and the universe kind of reveals the path. And sometimes it's not even the path that we think is meant for us. It's exactly. better. It's yeah. better than what we thought. A hundred percent. And so like, I, so I will let, let you know, I've never cried on an interview. So that was, that was guided for somebody to hear that. And I have never cried on an interview. So that came directly from some, right. God source, someone needed to hear that. So thank you for asking that question. Cause I, I literally went full body back 10 years ago and I experienced that. So Yeah. So I hope that serves, I hope this interview serves somebody. Um, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Thank you so, so, so much, Kelly. It's been, I feel like I want to go, go on and on talking to you for like hours. I just feel like there's so much to talk about and to share. So thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, your wisdom, and most importantly, your authentic emotions. It's so refreshing. It's refreshing <laughs> to hear and to see people who are themselves and yeah. they share their struggle and they always show the happy ending. And again, the definition of happy ending is so different. Um, I think the universe is always happening for us and we think something makes us happy and it doesn't work out. And then years later, we're like, yes, I'm so glad it didn't work out because yeah. I don't think it would have made me happy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, hearing, hearing your journey. And I needed to hear that as well. The moment you said um, societal standards, and I think it coming from Middle Eastern culture, there's so much of that. Of, you need to be married by a certain age. You need to have kids by a certain age. And you get to that age and you're like, oh my God, like I'm behind schedule, like panic mode. Like <laughs> where, where do I find the answers? And just sitting with the uncertainty and allowing that uncertainty to reveal a different path that is more aligned with, with your purpose. So, and being okay. Like yeah. I can honestly say I'm at such peace in my life with like at my whole life right now. And I think it was also joys of tear be- tears because 10 years ago I was so like just cracking the whip on myself, you know, and like, Oh, it's not okay. And how's it going to look? And, th- and it's like, I wasn't at peace with any part of my life. And so that's what I think is so important. Like now it's like, now there's more work to be done. I'm not complete and done. Like, all right, yeah, I wouldn't woke up today. But what I can say is like, I am so much more at peace than I was 10 years ago. And I was like, wow. Like when you asked me that question, I was like, wow, I've actually never, like it just hit me, you know, of being like, wow, I was such in a place where I know so many, because I have a client right now and she's struggling at the same, same thing, you know, with that same thing of um, just that uncomfortableness. So yeah, like being at peace, you know, how can you be at peace like a little bit more today in your process? I love that. A little bit more today. That's it. That's all you need. Like you don't need to go zero to 100 overnight, just a little bit more. That's all. Thank you so, so, so much, Kelly. It's been a pleasure having you, honestly. Thank you so much. I don't know. Thank you for having me. (laughs) One more to say, but really, really thank you. And thank you everyone for listening. Speak soon. Thank you for joining us this week on Minutes on Growth. If you enjoyed today's episode, then make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now.